Today in our video, we're going to talk about how to do rotation of motion. So our final product, if you can watch this piece right here, as we turn the handle, you can see that it's turning as well. That is where we're headed. The first thing we'll want to do is actually pull in the parts that we need to work with. So I'm going to go in place and find the follower first and place it in there. And I will mate those. So in order to mate those, I will just take the axis that I put through and here as well and apply that. So now this piece should move up and down through there. Okay, now I don't want to do an angle constraint there because that's going to have to be free to turn. Now one thing I would caution you on, this is going to turn inside there and physically that can't happen. So your piece right here, your guide, you're going to actually want to make that hole a little bit bigger, right? So that it can actually turn. So the next piece I'll go ahead and put in is the actual bottom. So I'll hit that and click OK. Again, I'm going to go ahead and constrain and I'll make these two pieces together and apply it. Then I'll zoom in here and I'm actually going to have to mate the side to one of the sides of the follower. And I'll apply that. And then I'll go ahead and flush up the ends. So here and here. And I can apply that. So now I have that system set up so that if I move this up and down, you can see it can move. It can also turn. We have some degrees of freedom on that. So the next thing I will do is I'll go ahead and put the cam in. So I'll constrain those again and I'll mate the axis to this axis and apply it. So now that I've mated those, I need to put this in position. What I would recommend doing, and there are several ways to do this, but you can constrain and you can mate this side to right here and then focus in on the view and you can use your offset now remember what we want to do here is we really we want that to be offset so we don't want it dead center so maybe a 0 0.75 because if it were dead center, it would just move it up and down. It wouldn't move it in a rotational direction, which is where we're headed later. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead, just like our other cams, and we'll go ahead and put the transitional constraint on it. Notice I moved that up just a little bit, just so I can have some spacing to work with. So I'll go to constraint just like before. We'll do a transitional We'll click the bottom here, and then we'll click the edge of the cam, just like we have done before. Before we rotate the crank, though, we want to set this together. So I need to actually put some sort of either an angle constraint or a mate constraint. So I'm going to make this edge of the cam to right here, and now I'll apply that. So now if I turn the crank... We should see it just simply moving up and down. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and I'm going to put something here on the top just so you can see it turning better. So I'll rotate this into picture here. I'm just going to constrain it. I'll make this edge or this side to right in here. And we'll go ahead and angle things well so they look halfway decent. There's a directed angle there. When we look at that and we turn the crank, we should see it moving up and down, which is what we would expect. What we're going to do now, though, is make that physically turn. So to do that, I'll go back to constraint. I'm going to use a motion constraint. And we can use either solution, really, but they should move in opposition. So I'll click the top. And then I'll click the side of the cam and I'll apply that. When I zoom out, 
And let's go ahead and zoom all here so we can see it everything. And I turn that, you can see that the top is turning. So that is how we take care of rotational movement, our rotational motion on top of our automatas.